Hey, welcome back to Boxes and Bubbles for another spoiler free comic review. Today we're looking at Stray Dogs number 5 from Image Comics. Written by Tony Fleeks, art by Trish Forstner, and colours by Brad Simpson. This one is the final issue of Stray Dogs, for now anyway, more on that later. And while I'll avoid the major story spoilers, it's safe to say that if you haven't read the previous four issues, you'll get some things spoiled for you if you watch a review of the last issue. Don't run off yet though, because I want to talk about the art in this book first. I did some looking around to see if I could find any other comics with art by Trish Forstner. What's crazy is before Stray Dogs, the only book that Trish had worked on was My Little Pony, which seems like it was based on the TV show. And you know, that already has an established style, so the design and art for that weren't Trish's original ideas. But the art in Stray Dogs is absolutely amazing. It looks like stills from a classic Don Bluth or Disney movie, and the colours match it perfectly. The series is about, as the title suggests, dogs, and all of them are so cute, with animated facial expressions and big old eyes. Imogene is my absolute favourite, though she doesn't do much besides laze around and be massive. The cuteness of the art is a big contrast to the story though, which is pretty dark and involves a lot of murder. And now that we're getting towards the end of the series, quite a bit of violence towards some of the dogs. We will move on to the story now, so it's time to duck out if I've convinced you to check the series out for yourself. The previous issues gave us the setup. These dogs are being kept by a master who murdered their female owners and buried them under his porch. The dogs can communicate and talk to each other, but they don't have much capacity for memory, and they've forgotten the murders, their old lives and owners. Though the newest arrival, Sophie, has been able to remember her owner, who she adorably refers to as her lady, when she smells a scarf which has her scent on it. Initially, the other dogs don't believe her, except for Rusty, who trusts her and even lies about remembering a murder to try and sway the others. Gradually, a few of them start to remember things and take her side, while Earl refuses to believe her and stays loyal to the master. There's a room in the house the master keeps locked, and the dogs all know they aren't allowed to go in there. They think it's where the dog treats are kept, but it's actually where the master is keeping a hoard of trophies taken from the women he's killed, including clothes, shoes, and heads of dogs he's killed and mounted, including one that looks like poor Victor, who was old yellowed in issue 3 after he recognised an emergency call button on the telephone and tried to call emergency services. Everyone else is hiding downstairs because they've been outside looking for poor Victor. Unfortunately, when they went into the tool shed at the back of the house, they found his pelt hanging from a hook. While this is going on, Earl is wandering around, feeling sorry for himself, upstairs, and he finds the treat room open and goes inside. When the master comes home and finds him in there, he's enraged and immediately makes a move to kill Earl with a shotgun. But Earl's too quick for him and makes a break for it, telling all the other dogs to run. Of course, the master follows them and is about to shoot Earl when my girl machine's huge ass jumps on him and he falls down a flight of stairs. Everybody barrels outside and they decide to make an escape. The road outside the house is extremely busy and the dogs are too scared to try to cross. They desperately need a way to make the car stop and let's just say that they find one. After the traffic stops, the master passes out from blood loss thanks to a wound in his neck that Earl gave him. The police show up and luckily they have a dog with them, so the others don't waste a second in telling the police dog about the bodies they found while digging around under the porch. The book ends a few months later. Sophie, now renamed Trudy, meets a familiar dog in the park but she can't quite put her paw on who it is. The two play and the owners chit chat and it turns out both dogs are rescues. As Trudy leaves the park she hesitates and looks back at Rusty who she now doesn't remember. Her new owners call out to her and she leaves the park happily with them. So mostly a happy if bittersweet ending. But right at the back there's a tease for Stray Dogs Dog Days which features a shattered picture of Other Henry in a bathtub. So I'm glad to see there'll be more from this one and I'll be looking forward to its return. But until then, if you're interested in any other books that came out recently, make sure to check out the rest of the channel where there are other spoiler-free reviews. And follow along on Twitter at Foxes and Bubbles to hear about other books I didn't have time to make videos for. That's all for now, but I'll catch you next time.